I pre-ordered the Darkness and Aqua figures when they were announced to be re-released in December, since I had missed the original edition. Finally, she's here, and here are my quick thoughts. The box is in the usual Nendoroid box, which has the clear window to show off the figure, as well as various poses shown on the box. You can already see the large amount of accessories included through that window. The Konosuba logo implies that the figure is from the second season of the anime. This figure comes with tons of accessories, and it's going to take some time to list them all. Starting with the two cabbage enemies, they have different facial expressions with good sculpting to reflect the cabbage leaves. They even come with two small stands to hold them up, though the bases are a little bit small, so it takes a bit of work to get them balanced. Next we have the two extra faces. One is the enjoyment face, and the other is the embarrassed face. The standard smiling neutral face is already on the figure. There's actually a whole extra body as well, along with two arm pieces attached to replicate the damaged armor. For the arms, we have those two hugging arms already attached to that body, as well as the two posable arms already on the figure. Also, we get two other 90 degree bent arms to pose her with the sword standing up. By the way, it's almost impossible to get this pose done right, since the sword doesn't actually lock into her hand, and the base has no indentation for the sword. The only way for the sword to stay standing up in her hand is to use the pressure of the arm, pushing the sword against the base. It took me at least 10 minutes to get the pose done right. Talking about the swords, we actually get two of them, of different lengths. The short one is for the stand-up pose, and the long one is for actually holding it in her hand. There's also an extra right hand for actually holding the sword. Sadly, there's no left holding hand, so only the right hand can hold the sword. Moving on to the figure, the hair has good sculpting with the braiding around her ponytail, which is nice. The red hair ties aren't just red paint, but it's raised from the hair. Her face is well painted, with clear and crisp painting on the eyes. The expressions on all three of them look really good and are close to the anime. The armor has decent sculpted detail, with ridges along the breastplate and the abs section. The red bow is especially nice, and the painting overall is very good, with very little overspray. I do appreciate that they used a gloss white for the white armor sections, which adds a nice contrast to the figure. On the damaged armor version, her breastplate and ab plates are gone, replaced with the black top underneath, with some rips in the fabric. The rips are actually textured, so it's not just painting. The corset ab section with straps is well done, and is true to the show. Painting again is very good. The arms don't have much detail, but that's expected as well. Painting could be better here though on the arms, as I see quite a lot of underspray and overspray for the orange-yellow section. The two white armor pieces have some sculpted detailing on them, which is nice. Waist down, she's covered with the rest of her flowing armor and is sculpted and painted as well as the top half. Underneath, the black dress is showing through the front armor and is a completely separate piece from the armor. Both the black dress and the armor are made with a kind of soft plastic, so there is some give. A weird issue my figure has is that there is a pretty big gap between the top half and the bottom half of her body. I couldn't really make the gap any smaller, but this might be just my copy of the figure. Her legs are mostly covered by the armor and dress, and the only thing visible are the grey boots. They have almost no detail though, as usual with Nendoroid figures. Moving on to the articulation, her head is on a ball joint which gives great rotation and is only blocked by her hair piece and the white armor pieces. The head can bend up quite a lot and bend down just a little bit. Her ponytail is actually on a ball joint, but there's actually not enough room to move it in and out, so it basically just rotates 360 degrees. Her articulated arm is amazing, with the shoulder joint allowing pivoting up to almost parallel with the ground. There's also a bicep swivel, which allows for 360 degree rotation. Moving on to the elbow, there is an elbow bend to almost 90 degrees. 
The hand is on a regular peg joint, which allows for a 360 degree rotation as well. The right white shoulder armor piece is on a ball joint. Whereas the left piece is on a peg and can rotate slightly. The waist is on a simple peg joint and can rotate pretty much 360 degrees. The legs are on ball joints, but are pretty stiff. She can only kick forward and backward slightly. The foot can rotate quite a bit inward and outward though, which should help with some poses. For a figure with an MSRP of about 4200 yen, I think this is very good value. It comes with lots of accessories to pose her in quite a few iconic poses and the articulation is pretty good for an Enderoid figure. I especially like the arm articulation. The painting is good with decent sculpting as well, and for fans of Konosuba, this is a no-brainer. I would highly recommend this figure. Just don't try to put it in that sword pose, that's just an exercise in frustration.